everyone and welcome back to Shanka show. So today we're going to have another unboxing fan mail video. Uh, this one I wait, I was waiting for this uh, parcel for a while. Uh, it was sent me by John from Indiana. And fun fact, on the box UPS said that to be delivered on March 8th. I recently just got it in the beginning of April. I was coming to postal office but was not in my P.O. Box 96. By the way, fun fact, in Berrien Springs, they don't have P.O. Box 69. I specifically asked, like, I looked at your boxes, you don't have P.O. Box 69. And the guy Snickers said, nope, we don't. But anyways, um, thank you so much to John from Indiana. And we talk about it, he has a nice collection of old cameras. And he was willing to present me some. So I expect to see this cool Pentax that probably going to look very similar to my Kia. So that's the main camera in my collection, the film camera that I used to own back in the day. And I came to America with this camera beginning from 95 and so on. So let's take a look what we got here. Paperwork for Pentax. All right, so we got a bunch of looks like flashes. Vivitaria. I never knew about this brand until I came to America in 95 when I was a photography specialist. If you read my book, American Diaries 1995, they had the cheap plastic cameras Vivitaris. That was the first time I discovered this brand. So it looks like we got several flashes. Argus, that's another brand I'm not familiar with. And it looks like another flash. Wow, I'll be all flashy. Oh, that's a Yashica. It's heavy. So this is a... Well, that's a real deal right there, isn't it? It's like an adult. Real photographer style. That'll be interesting to try it out. Really cool. Thank you. Alright. Got some cables here. <laughs> 33 millimeter films. That's awesome. Okay, what else we got? A bunch of goodies. Look like some filters. I really never worked with filters. Tell you the truth. Never knew about their existence when I was in Ukraine taking pictures of my Kiev camera. That's probably another flash. Vivitar. Yeah, photography used to be a cool and quite expensive business. Nice lens. I remember I used to have a Nikon film camera. I bought it here in America in the early 2000s. And then I forgot about it. And then I was cleaning my office and I found the camera. And I discovered it still had film. Oh boy. I'm not sure what's that. Looks like a light. Need two hands to open that, but I'll check it out. So I was like, you know, it's interesting. This and the film was like completely where all the pictures were taken, but was still sitting there for like almost five or years or more. So I took to a local supermarket. At that time, they still have a film developing. And, you know, I gave him film and came back several days later and I was like, you know, I kind of miss that part when you, you know, waiting, uh, not sure what's on your film or how to turn out. You know, you maybe try to do pictures of sunset or whatever and you were wondering, uh, you know, if the picture turned out or not. It was all this anticipation and I was like, man, I kind of miss that. And then I paid $15, got my 24 photos. And I discovered that my kids got a hold of my camera and it was pretty much the whole film, whole, every picture was just uh, eye, foot, floor, sky. So $15 were completely wasted. And I said, you know what, forget about it. And that was the day when I quit film. I sold that camera on eBay. Somebody in California bought it because their daughter was going to the some photography school and they required to have a film camera. It's another cool flash. More cables, and we got 
<laughs> yeah. Oh man, film. There's another thing there. That's a, looks like another lens, right? Yep. You know, the digital camera instant gratification, this is a kind of, it's cool to have it, but definitely film didn't have that part. And I remember someone was telling me actually, Bogdan who was helping me to make videos. He was asking like, why are your old pictures are so like good quality, like really good photos. And now it's just not that good. And I was like, well, back in the day when film was so expensive, I couldn't afford just take a picture left and right. So I was like a sniper taking careful shots. And now I can, you know, just take 100 of those and delete 99. Oh, here we go. There we go. Careful here. Oh yeah, look at that beauty. I would never dream in my life to own Japanese film camera. Those were so expensive and so hard to get in Soviet Union. K1000. I need to make a research on this camera to find out more details. Thank you so much, John. This is awesome. I might have to go back to film photography. Let's see, we'll just do a little comparison. I mean, there's a little, a little bit of similarities, right? Also SLR, single lens. That's neat. Really cool. Alright, we're gonna see if I'll open the box and we'll look what's inside of that box. And the last item was Yashica FX103. So this one is a smaller one. I'm not familiar with that brand at all. Never heard of it. Once again, they're all quite similar. Also made in Japan. And they'll be fun to play with them. Thank you so much. And once again, this is awesome. It will go on my shelf. And I probably should buy some film and try it. It actually was a film in the box, but I'm not sure if it's already was processed or not. I don't know if there's any indications if the film was already processed or it's still good. It reminds me one time when I came from the United States, it was like 95 or 96, I remember, but the film was almost twice cheaper here in America, in Michigan. So that was another side little business I was doing. I was buying a Fuji color film here at local Meyer supermarket. Like those packs of four and reselling them back home to my buddies who needed film and i sold one and a friend came back like dude something wrong with your camp film i you know it's i took some pictures of my relatives in the village and the film was all exposed was shot and i couldn't understand because it was brand new i bought at my i know nobody was messing with it then i was thought about it and i questioned my brother my brother tom he's 15 year my junior and after a while, he was denying for a while his involvement, then he admitted he was curious to see what's... He already thought they had a negative on it, so he was curious to see what's on the pictures. So he just pulled all the film out, exposed it, and then he quietly rolled back in, put it in the box, and put it in my drawer. And I never knew that he wasted that film, so I just got lucky, because if I would sell it to some photographer who went and took a picture of the wedding just to find out that everything is was bad that'll be a bad day for everyone so yeah this is what i got from john from indiana thank you so much it was a great surprise and great present and i'll be looking maybe to do some photography now i got interested again by the way in my basement i have a, a enlarger to print pictures a while back I was doing moving and uh, people were thrown away so I kept it. It's also made in Japan, I don't remember the brand but I hate it thrown away because I used to have a larger back in Ukraine and it's actually that's how I got a job here in Michigan because I was doing photography and I could develop a black and white film and I could print pictures on my own and that's what they were looking, photography specialist for Camp Rosenthal here in Michigan. All right, well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much again for this present. I enjoy a lot presents and postcards from you guys. And if you have anything you'd like to share, 
It's Rusham Kashel, PO Box 96, PM Springs, Michigan. It's actually 49103. All right. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.